Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com. Today I'm sharing a no-sew gnome with a wool lock beard. If you'd like to make it, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. Now this is a quick little guide to work up and if you've never needle felted before, this less than 30 minute DIY is a good start. Before we get started, let me show you one second views of a few of the gnomes I have created with this pattern. This is an extremely versatile pattern and all of the pattern pieces you see are included, including extras like the mushrooms and the succulents. All right, so back to this one. I'm going to be using a flannel for the hat and the two body pieces, and you can cut them out of everything, but there's three pieces that I'm using from the pattern. I'm going to be gluing this pattern, but I'll need some pins, and I'm going to be using wool locks and needle felting needle to create the beard. You can use faux fur, yarn, anything you have. For the stuffing and fill, I'm using poly pellet beads and poly stuffing. Now, as I mentioned, this pattern can be glued or sewn. I've shared both of them. So I'm going to create a hem here on my flannel. You don't have to if you want to add a trim. But I'm just going to flip up the center about a half of an inch, and then I'm going to snip each of the sides. So this is a nice curved brim pattern, which is why I wanna do this. Now, if I was sewing this, I wouldn't necessarily snip it, but with the hot glue gun, it does make it look a little nicer if we just snip. You're not snipping all the way because you don't want a hole there, um, but you're just gonna be able to hot glue up the bottom half inch. Now we put the right sides together and we're going to anchor. So I'm going to anchor the bottom piece here. Now I get asked a lot, why do I use sewing pins if I'm just hot gluing a pattern? The answer is this. So in order to not have to use pins, you're going to have to go backwards and forwards from the bottom to the top to make sure that everything stays in place and everything is lined up perfectly. I am an extremely lazy crafter. So for me, I just pin it and then I'll have to go back and forth. But I'm going to show you as people have requested it to do it without using pins. Another option without pins is actually to create fabric weights out of a few metal washers wrapped in fabric. Uh, that works really, really well. Or put them in a bag, just stack them right on top of your piece and you won't have any shifting. I use that for bigger, bigger items. All right, so once that's done, we're just gonna set this entire piece aside and let the glue dry. For the body, you're just gonna follow the pattern instructions, put the fabric right sides together, and then glue it up all the way along the side and the top. And you can see I just pinned that one. It's a lot easier for me. All right, now here's another question I get asked about a lot. Whether you're gluing or you're sewing, pin this part on. I have to tell you, you can use clips, but the pins just work a little easier. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin the base piece facing into the body, and then you're gonna anchor that. You can anchor it anywhere you want. I prefer to anchor it next to the seam. And then I'm gonna squish both of these two pieces, make a little crease, and then I'm just gonna line up these two creases. Normally, I do this without creasing, but it's really easy to crease the fabric if you'd like. And then you're just gonna pin that in place. Now I wanna show you the back just like I did before. We're not going very far here, right? Cause we don't need a huge seam. We just need a little tiny bit. Now you're just going to join the two parts that are in between the pins. So you can see, you can start on this side and just make sure it's all lined up right here in the center and then pin that center piece. All I'm doing is just moving that fabric around in my fingers. As I've shared, I've done this with chambray, I've done this with fleece and flannel, and all of it, and cotton actually, and it all works the same way. You can just shuffle that fabric around until you get no lumps. I just pulled that pin out. I'll just move it over here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna speed through this. You're just gonna do the other side as well. I normally use about four or five pins, but if you're new, just pin every, I don't know, three quarters of an inch like this, and you can see all the way around. Now for gluing, I like to put it on the table for this part so it's nice and flat and I get a nice even bead of glue, and then I'll just pick it up and gently press it together. You don't need to smash it together and squeeze, but you're just gonna repeat this all the way around. And you take out the pins, add a little bit of glue, squish it together, Take out the pens, put it back on the table, add a little glue, and you just do that all the way around. 
I will say that I tried this with the hem tape trick that someone uh, taught me. It didn't go well for me. I don't know if I'm not a very good hem tape person, but I prefer the hot glue. So here I am just pulling everything apart, making sure I don't have any holes or pieces that I forgot to glue. And then I'm going to rub that bottom seam in between my finger and make sure the body stands up straight. I'm going to add enough poly pellets, and yep, I go ahead and spill them here too. It's like my trigger. It's like my trait. You can de define me by that. But we're going to put enough weight that it's about halfway up the body, and then we're going to wrap small tufts of polyfill around that outside edge so you cannot see any of the, the weighted poly pellets. And then we're just going to stuff this all the way up to the very brim, and when we squeeze it, it bounces back. It passes the drop test and we're ready to seal this up for the pattern. Easy peasy. Once it is all sealed, make sure you have no holes, make sure it always drops flat, and then it's time to move on. To move on, we're going to turn our hat right sides out and you can even help yourself with some hemostat scissors or a pair of needle nose pliers. Now, because this is cut to a point, it is not going to create a point. It's not designed to. This is a nice little rounded off tip. And I am using the, I mean, most of the time I use a pencil, but I'm using the needle nose pliers to gently press out that tip. And you'll see it's going to go really slow, but they, it's right there. There you go. And then that is the end because that gives it a nice little rounded edge. I'm going to slip on the hat and get an idea of where to put my beard. So I'm going to pull the hat all the way back down to the body and you can either put wire and stuffing in the hat or you can put stuffing just in the little bit at the top and then flop it over or you can be like me and just have a nice long drapey thing over the side. For the nose you can use a wood ball, a wood bead, a pom-pom, a felted nose, whatever you would like, I'm going to be ending up using a wood ball. Now up here is where I'm going to attach my felted wool. So I'm going to create a line. You don't have to do this. It just helps me as a guide on where to put the top of my beard. I want it up under the brim of the hat by at least a half inch so that we can hide all the joins. So this is a wool mat. You can get a wool buddy. This is, you know, pressing mat, whatever you'd like. I'm using wool from Mike Fish Deep. He's on Etsy. I've shared this wool before. So soft, so lovely. I'm just pulling out a couple of really curly, beautiful pieces because those are going to go in front. But first I have to create a base. So what I'm going to do is just fold over the top of that wool lock and I'm just going to needle felt it, which means I punch it straight into that polyfill and through the flannel and that's going to attach it. And I'm just going to repeat that right along that top edge uh, or that piece that I drew. Now I do get asked a lot if people can use a multi-needle. I love multi-needles. You can add two, three, four, five, six needles on there. It does make it go a little faster, but you absolutely do not need it. I bought my entire needle felting kit on Amazon. If you want the link, let me know. It came with all this. It was really nice. All right, so I'm just building up the sides, and now it's time to put on those pretty pieces in front. Now, I am making sure that all these curls, I'm going to stop this here so you can see it. The curls are going to hang out the bottom of that hat. That's what we want. So I'm just going to slip this right back on so I can get an idea of where that nose is going to be. So I'm going to raise up the hat a little bit, and then I'm going to needle felt more of that wool down. That way it'll push it backwards. I add a little glue, add my wood bead for the nose, and then secure the hat in the back. There you go. Now I'm just going to needle felt around the bottom of the nose so that it has a nice bushier piece that makes it stick out a little bit uh, in front before I glue down the very top brim of the hat to the top of the nose. I won't be gluing any more on the wool locks, so I'll actually push those out of the way on either side and just glue about a quarter of an inch inside of the brim of the hat on both sides. And he's done! Let me know down below in the comments what do you think about this. Also down in the comments section, I have this pattern. It is called the Wild Gnome Pattern. I love it so much. As always, thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.